Well, folks, welcome to one more edition of Politics and Radomek. Thank you so kindly for being a part of the show. Let me tell you something, folks. Things work. Not only does things work, activism work. And why do I say that? Uh, here, right here on the good old Daily Coast, one of the rags that I think it's necessary for you guys to make sure to support dailycoast.com. What comes out, what shows up on dailycoast.com? Let's see if I can put that out here. It turns out... Public outrage gets results after Kroger tries to back emergency payments to some workers. And here it goes. It says, when the independent news site Tennessee Hustler tweeted a letter from Kroger to an employee clawing, uh, clawing back 461 60 in over, overpaid emergency pay and even threatening further collection efforts, outrage ensued as it should, as it should. The good news is Kroger quickly paid attention to what the outrage and backed off. We are instructed our payroll department to directly inform the small number of associates affected by the recent overpayments of emergency leave of absence pay that we will not seek repayment, a Kroger spokesperson said. I don't know if that applies to the $2 that they're no longer given as emergency pay to their workers, but let me tell you, if you guys show uh, it with your feet by not shopping at these stores that are not paying their, their, their employees appropriately, we can act. You see how we have uh, the oil companies overflowing with oil because we are no longer using it unnecessarily? We can do the same with the with gas. We can do the same. We can do the same thing with everything. The fact of the matter, folks, is we are in control, and right now they are wrestling. How do we take back control away from the people who are starting to realize that the ones who control the economy, the ones who control everything, folks, really is you? We have to get that in the minds of people, but. Before we get there, I want to bring up some of some outrages here that's going on with El Señor Presidente. Uh, as, as you guys know, he decided that it was okay to use hydrochloroquine or whatever the drug is called. So I want to play you a little piece here. Uh, let me go ahead and cue that piece up where he decided that he was going to... What, what's the word that we want to use? Um... Uh, he decided that he was going to start taking the drug, uh, chloro, hydrochloroquine. And you know, you know when you are in trouble? When Fox News says, uh-uh, we are going to stop allowing you to kill our customers. Who are their customers? Their viewers. So check this out. This is a report by MSNBC that also did a cue on Fox News. So let's go ahead and do that, and then we'll take it on the other side. Mike Pence told Fox News that unlike his boss, he is not taking the anti-malaria drug hydroxychloroquine, even though he was potentially exposed to coronavirus from an aide who tested positive. Yesterday, the president said he is taking the drug, which has not been shown to be effective in treating the virus and could cause complications for people with heart problems. Within the past hour, the president spoke about his use of hydroxychloroquine. Here is some of what he said upon on Capitol Hill. I've worked with doctors, and uh, if you look at the one survey, the only bad survey, they were giving it to people that were in very bad shape. They were uh, very old, almost dead. It was a, a Trump enemy statement. A lot of our frontline workers take it because it possibly, and I think it does, but you know, it's, people are going to have to make up their own mind. Plus, it doesn't hurt people. It's been out on the market for 60 or 65 years for malaria, lupus, and other things. Uh, I think it gives you an additional level of safety. Today, the medical community is reminding all Americans that hydroxychloroquine has not been shown to be safe or effective for treating coronavirus or to prevent it. And minutes after Trump announced he was taking it yesterday, viewers on Fox News heard these warnings. If you are in a risky population here and you are taking this as a preventative uh, treatment to ward off the virus or in a worst case scenario, you are dealing with the virus and you are in this vulnerable population, it will kill you. I cannot stress enough. This will kill you. These drugs can be very dangerous. And if they don't have any effect, there's no reason to take them. That might have prompted President Trump to tweet last night that he was, quote, 
looking for a new outlet. And then he missed Roger Ailes. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi used the news to take a shot at the president's health. He's our president, and I would rather he not be taking something that has not been approved uh, by the scientist, especially in his age group and in his, shall we say, weight group, what is morbidly obese, they say. So I, I, uh, I, I think it was, it's not a good idea. I think it's not a good idea, so says uh, el, la señorita or la señora Pelosi. But I mean, we, we are, look, when, when Trump, when Fox News starts to tell its audience to disregard what the president has to say, when Fox News starts to tell you that, how then can the seek offense that, that, they, that the president continue to have justify their support for this guy? Please help me out here, people. How can they continue to justify support for Donald Trump when his, his network of choice is now telling people, hey, guys, don't particularly listen to what the president is saying. What the president is saying will get you killed. That's what they said. What the president is saying will get you killed. Well, anyhow, that's not what the program is about today, however, but I just needed to get that one out because, like I said, if you hear certain things from Fox that on, against the president, that's how bad he's gotten. Folks, if you're just joining us, please remember what we need, what we implore of you to do right now is please share the program. Please share the program on your, way, on your page, on your wall, uh, Twitter, Tumblr, whatever, because it is essential that we get this info out to people. We're going to talk about the stimulus, the economy. We're going to talk about what we have to do to make sure that when this depression occurs, we can come out correct on the other side of the depression. I'm going to tell you what we have to do. There's a depression coming, but that's not the end of the world. This depression can actually make things better for us all because it gives us the wherewithal to force our government to do and make the changes to society that it needs to make. And that is, those are, that's what we're going to talk about. I'd love to have your input as well. So please, if you're just joining us, please remember to share this on your wall, share this on your page, tweet it out. Likewise, I ask you to go to our YouTube page and please uh, subscribe to the YouTube page. That is youtube.com slash willies again that is youtube.com slash egberto willies and like or twitter that is twitter.com slash egberto willies twitter.com that's egberto willies if you're not listening directly on our page it is uh, facebook.com slash politics done right again that is facebook.com slash politics done right okay i'm going to go to our first first of all let's talk about what the show is going to be the title of the show today is 2020 stimulus is turning into the 2009 corporate ripoff with the help of your government. All right? Uh, the bailout sounded great when we heard that the government was ready and able. $2 trillion like that. $3 trillion like that. Oh, that was wonderful. That was marvelous because... It acted. The government used Keynesian technology, m uh, modern monetary theory to say, we as the government who have sovereign o sovereignty over our money, we understand that the corporate sector, the business sector, the private sector does not have the wherewithal because we're asking people to stay home to keep the economy flowing. Keynesian economics says, as well as modern monetary theory says, that in order to keep an economy of our type flowing, the government must be the source of income of last resort. And that is what it seemed like these things were doing. It's not to, and it's not to fatten executives. It's not to give a transfer of wealth to the shareholders of the companies. Well, guess what? It is actually turning exactly into that. Before I go to Stephanie Rule, what I want to do is I want to play the, the, the interchange between Steve Mnuchin, which is the Secretary of the Treasury, the guy who controls the money for Donald Trump, and Elizabeth Warren, because this particular interface, this particular interchange is probative. And whether you understand economics or not, I, I need you to listen to this and we will take it on the other side. If you have questions about this, we'll take it on the other side. But just it seems like a call is in. 
uh, caller at 982. If you want to speak, I don't know if you're just listening or you just want to speak. If you want to speak, you have to hit the number one. I'm going to wait for about 10 seconds to see if you hit the number one to tell me that you want to say something. Otherwise, I'm going to go into the video and assume that, you, there you go, you have a number one. Let's go ahead and bring you in and then we'll move on. Who do I have the honor of speaking with at 982? Okay, are you going to say something or are you just going to play some music? Okay, I guess not. All right, if you actually had something that you wanted to say, friend, you can always call us and this is a, a free open for all. Anyhow, I want you to listen to uh, Elizabeth uh, Warren and then we'll take it on the other side. So I had a very simple question for you. You say the economy is going to recover. It's going to take jobs in order for that to happen. So what I want to know is, are you going to require companies that receive money from this half a trillion dollar slush fund to have to keep people on payroll? It's a simple question. Yes or no? Are you going to require that? First, let me say that our number one objective is keeping people employed. Good. So, so are you going to I want to be very clear on that. People who are getting taxpayer money. That's my question. It, it, again, we negotiated very significant restrictions on employee compensation, on dividends, on buybacks. And in the Main Street facility, we have put in a pr provision that we expect people to use their best efforts to support jobs. So, so but, but, but is, I'm, is sorry, but I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I have very limited time here, Mr. Secretary. Let me understand what you're saying. In all the facilities that are not the Main Street facility, you're not putting in any requirement for payroll. And the Main Street facility is something about a commercial reasonable effort uh, to be able to uh, maintain jobs. In other words, if somebody fires, if a corporation fires a bunch of people, then gets federal taxpayer money, you're fine with that. Or if they take a bunch of federal taxpayer money and then say, well, it didn't work out commercially for us, then they can fire people. So I take it your answer to my question that uh, whether or not you're going to require as part of the terms of the loan that people be kept on payroll is no. Is that right, Secretary Mnuchin? That was discussed with people on both sides of the aisle. No, and the determination no, was made at the time. Sheets. I'm sorry, Secretary Mnuchin. I'm talking about your term sheets that you're putting out and you're telling me you're not going to require any payroll. Let me ask you one more question. Taxpayers are on the hook here for nearly half a trillion dollars. You're not going to require that they keep a single person on payroll. There are some rules though in the term sheets as you identified earlier like prohibiting companies from getting bailout money from double dipping in other CARES programs. And by law, companies that get this money are going to have to sign agreements certifying that they're in compliance. So, Secretary Mnuchin, here's what I want to know. Will you create a certification process that ensures that executives are held personally liable and are subject to criminal penalties if they provide false information or misuse bailout funds? And if you could be uh, brief, Mr. Secretary. Please. Well, we, we, we will review that. And, and again, I would just comment on programs like the airline programs had very specific requirements to keep jobs, which was the intent of Congress. That's right. And the rest was left up to you. And what you're saying is that you won't do it. You know, Thank we're you. in a situation where 35 million Americans have filed for unemployment. You're in charge of half a trillion dollars. You're boosting your Wall Street buddies, and you are leaving American people behind. I think so that's Senator, Senator Warren, I think that's a very unfair characterization. And these issues were discussed with both Republicans and Democrats at the time. You were not necessarily part of those discussions, but these were completely discussed. You were given the authority to determine the terms. You've said it yourself, you're putting out term sheets. And those term sheets do not require that a single corporation getting billions of dollars in taxpayer money retain their one job. Okay, um, let, me, let me tell you something, folks, and this is very important. This is very important. Uh, if you understand, and caller at 836, I'm coming to you in a minute, but I need to get this out. 
understand what Minuchin is saying there. While other people have to, some other companies have to fulfill particular issues with regards to uh, how they're going to spend the money, these corporations don't. In fact, they don't even have to inform when these corporations get loans until way after it is done. And there is no hard requirement that says none of this government money can go to the executives and bonuses. In fact, the company was just found last week to ask uh, for $9 million, got the $9 million and immediately gave $9 million worth of bonuses to their to their. Um, to their executives, and there's nothing there to pr that says these monies are not going to the shareholders. It's a sham. We have to make it that the money go. Th the, here's what we should do: we should be b bailing out absolutely no corporation. They got tax cuts that they were that were undeserved, etc. What we should be doing is giving money directly to the people, and wherever it is that the people, sh uh, high Jackson, high Whipping. Hi, uh, let's see, all of these are are YouTube today. Lawrence Sims from Facebook, how you doing? Peep from YouTube, welcome aboard. Thank you guys for all being here. Uh, so again, what we need to do is have monies go directly to the average American citizen. Everybody, whether you're working or not, you get the same amount of money. And why do we say even if you're working, you get the same amount of money? Because I consider those people who are working within a pandemic, that would turn out to be what I would call, uh, not emergency pay, but uh, there's a special word for that, uh, uh, lethal, not lethal pay, but you know what I'm talking about, uh, hazard pay. We should give everybody, let's say, a stipend of $2,000 a month to everybody, including those people who are working. Because if they're working, they're exposing themselves. Those who are sitting home, well, they just get the stipend. And then we will vote with our monies what companies deserve to survive. That is what we do. I have some other things to discuss, but let me see 836 and then I'll come in with you and people will get more. If you guys have specific uh, points you want to make as well, please go ahead and do so. Jackson, welcome aboard as well, sir. All right, uh, 836, you are on the air. Come on, 836. Hello? Yes, you are here, 836. Yep, um, it's, I'm whipping from the um, the chat. Where are you calling from? Uh, I'm calling from Node. From, go ahead. What would you like to say, sir? Well, basically, I'd just like to say thank you, Bob, for your refunding ebook. I've refunded ten thousand uh, Great British pounds worth of Amazon so far, and you've been a really great help. For, t I, I'm not sure what ebook are we talking about. Uh, it's it's uh, Bob's refunding ebook on refund.sh. Oh, I don't. You you must be trying to sell something while we're talking, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, sixty four euros. <laughs> okay, look, thank you, my friend. You have a you wonderful Bitcoin, day. Okay. Litecoin, Ethereum. Yeah, you too, my brother. You too. Take care, brother. All right, folks. If if uh, look, I don't mind somebody calling into the show and saying, "Hey, I would like you. I'm selling an ebook, and I'd like you to uh, go ahead and put it out there. If the ebook is something that's going to help our people here, I would be more than happy to say, use my uh, whatever network I have to do do it. I don't mind." But, you know, at least tell, tell me, look, I want to, I want to say something to the, your audience that will be positive for them. I don't mind that at all, but let's be honest about what we do here. I mean, that, that's how we operate here. Anyhow, folks, those of you who are listening on, on YouTube, if you like what you're seeing, if you like what you hear, please feel free to go ahead and give us an up. A, 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 what, what do we call it? Give us a, a, a super chat and we'll be more than happy to talk about what you're specifically saying that you want to say on our super chat. So including that caller, you want to get on a super chat, please do so. But anyhow, here's the deal, sir. Here's the deal, my brothers and my sisters. Here's the deal. Uh, this economy is changing. And what is occurring here is uh, we are having to reinflate after a pandemic. How are we going to accomplish that? I want you to listen to Stephanie Rule, and after Stephanie talks, I have a lot to say, because we have to start as asserting who we are, and after we have asserted who, who we are, we can make a difference, but we have to do this within the next few weeks, within the next few months, and why do I say that? Because, folks, the corporations already have their people talking too. The Congress people, that's the reason they're doing what they do. Check this out from Stephanie Rule, and then we'll take it from there. 
We've been saying for some time that we are going to have to engage quickly. And why? Because the plutocracy, they're going to go to Congress and they're going to make their will be known. And you know what? We're starting to see that. And we're starting to see that if we don't do it, we are going to go through the same thing we went through in 2008. We're going to go through the same thing we went through in 2017 with the tax cut fraud. So we have the stimulus of 2009 that did very little for middle class America. And we had the 2017 tax cut scam that did nothing for middle class America or poor America. And now we have all this stimulus that's coming. And check out what Rule has to say because it is important. The 2017 tax cut. Remember, we're going to give this big tax cut. We're going to make sure workers keep their jobs. Uh, it's going to help people in the middle class. They're going to get a pay increase. And companies are going to repatriate those dollars and move their operations to the United States. What we really saw happen was companies do what companies do, focus on their bottom line, their executives, and their shareholders. If Congress, if the Treasury Department doesn't put actual restrictions in place, nothing is going to push businesses to do that. Look at what the response has been. Jay Powell says we'll basically do whatever it takes and you've got the stock market. I mean, you had companies like Cruise Lines, uh, Disney, MGM, companies that are massively impacted by COVID, their shares going up. So what does that tell us? That investors look at this and say, well, more cash, that helps the price to earnings ratio, but it doesn't help our businesses and the U.S. economy. And the one other thing that I really push on how are you going to help things safely reopen? And here's an example. Walmart has been open this entire time. We saw their first quarter earnings numbers today. They spent $900 million on COVID-related expenses. If you, Craig Melvin, owned a surf shop in Westport, Connecticut, is the government going to help you financially safely reopen? Are they going to give you money to put uh, plexiglass in place? Are they going to give you temperature takers? Because the big giants, they don't need help. So this is going to make the big guys bigger and the small guys disappear. It's going to make the big guys bigger and the small guys disappear. All those small companies. And you know what? That is what they're aiming for. They don't care that a lot of people are going to be unemployed. They don't care that a lot of people are going to have small amount of money. It's because those plutocrats, that class, that 1% to 5% class that makes a lot of money off of money, that makes a lot of money off of values of paper employment is just that cog that gives them some more but if that cog is not giving them money but they're getting it from the government all they need to do is get rid of the heavy load a lot of the employees etc because the government has made them whole we have to take what's ours we have to make sure that all these bailouts etc etc don't go to these companies but go directly to the people this is when we're talking about having to have a paradigm shift because this is worse than 2000 uh, eight. This is worse than 2017 with that uh, bailout to corporations. We are talking about being at a tipping point. We're either going to tip into a complete corporatocracy, which we currently have on steroids, or we're going to finally have people dictating the terms of what our economy is going to and supposed to look like. Okay, I hope you like that. Uh, now, we're going to talk about that in two minutes. Let me go ahead and see uh, who 907 is. 907, you're on. How can I help you? Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Am I good? Yes, you are. Okay, so uh, I just needed, are you aware of uh, Jackson's uh, refunding services? No, what is? what are we talking about are here? Are you aware? Uh, oh, yeah, I need, so I was trying to get your opinion on them. Uh, uh, on Nold.to, there's a uh, Jackson runs a SEing and a refunding service. And I, do you know if it's good by any chance? I have no idea. Sure don't. Oh, I'm I'm trying to get into it. You know, he always uh, he's always talking about how he's the greatest and like everyone loves him, but I'm not sure, man. Like I don't know. I don't want to get scammed. I don't want to. Well, let, let me I, let I me tell make sure you that the highest quality. I don't know, but here is what we do. We're talking politics here. So if you have something about politics, we yeah, talk. I, I was just I was just about to get into it. So uh, basically, do you know who Bob is? He's uh, he's in Germany. He's a big guy in Germany. Do you know who Bob is? No. Oh well, Bob has the best refund ebook on the market. Okay, I <laughs> I think you understand what he was trying to do. 
All right, 389, uh, 389, you're on. Come on in, 389. Hello? You're on, 389. Hey. Okay, I guess we have some play callers right now. Anyhow, let me let me explain to you what, what's occurring, what uh, she was actually trying to say, and that is Stephanie Rule. Stephanie Rule uh, is pointed out something that we have to be cognizant of. Whenever there is a crisis, whenever there is something like what we're seeing here where there is massive disruption in our economic system, there's something that happens. And what specifically happens? The people with power can affect whatever change they want because we are so scared about what's into the future, we don't know exactly what to do. But here's the deal. We have proven as people that we do, that we have power. And how have we shown that? Over the last several months, last two months, uh, the oil companies have so far not been able to sell much of their fuel. They have not been able to sell much. So what has happened is all the reserve storage around the country, around the world, have been filling up. And in the process of getting filled up, the prices of oil started to fall. In fact, it got to a negative point. Why did oil get to a negative point? Because there was nowhere to store it. So they were begging people, to, they were giving people money to store the oil for them because there was no market for the oil. Okay, there was no market for the oil. Now, what that showed a whole lot of corporations, a whole lot of people themselves, is that after all, we... The masses are the ones in power. Now, we have to extend this. And how do we extend this? In every aspect. Now, so far, we've had the stimulus that came, out to, came to pass. But here's the problem. We still have all these lobbyists in Washington that have the ears of Congress, right? They're telling them, when you pass these laws, the way we are going, we, we, we can... First of all, the government can print as much money as it wants to print. But when they are printing the money, and when we say print, we're not talking about just printing cash or, or whatever, okay? What we're talking about, they are saying, they are going, they're deciding in order to keep the economy flowing, in order to move money, how do we do it? We either give it to people who have the ability to spend it, or we first give it to corporations who then say, let's make our shareholders hold first. Let's make sure the executives get bonuses first. And then we will decide if we're going to keep people hired or not. Remember, the idea is to keep the status quo. The idea is to keep things flat until the coronavirus is mitigated so that we can resume wherever we are. In, in, in the true sense of things, that is what we will do. And how can we do that? There, there are, the idea is there must be a way that we can keep everything st status quo except for those people that must work. The doctors, the nurses, the farmers, and all of that. If we get less people exposed, we have a lot less people exposed, that's less people who are going to get infected. And we, have, and we work very hard to make sure that the people that are out there working, they have the best health care that they can possibly get. They have the best equipment to keep them from getting infected as much as possible. Uh, the farmers are out there still growing, um, get growing. No matter what, we make sure that they can continue growing. We make sure that the people who make PPEs, that that's the protective units, can still make those units. We do all these things to keep those things going, right? But we keep the status quo. We keep the status quo. What that means is the pizza shop that cannot open right now. Let's keep them funded. Let's keep giving that owner of that pizza shop 
money so that he can pay his rent, so that he can pay whatever bills he has. Let's give the employees who's no longer working for that pizza person the money so that he can continue to pay his or her rent, so that they can continue to go ahead and buy groceries and etc. We keep every we're not trying to grow anything. We're, in other words, the stock market should be stagnant. The stock market should not be moving higher or lower. In fact, if I were the if I were running thing, I'll shut the damn stock market down. Until the pandemic is over, there is no reason for there to be stock trading because the economy is at a status quo till we can mitigate what's occurring. Nobody should be profiting. Nobody should be making any money. Zero. We should be on a sustenance level. All rents paid at whatever it is to sustain the chain. That is what you do. Right? That is what you do. But the plutocracy is gaming the system. As we are printing money to inflate the system, they are getting the cash to give each other to, to make money on us. And that is what we have to understand. Look, I have some calls coming in. I'm going to see if these are real calls. I'm going to take them and then we'll continue with the discussion. If they're not real calls, you press 1 if you want to speak. I'll take this one at 140. That looks like a Skype call. Anybody that just, you know, I'll, I'll cut you off if you're here to try to do anything other than talking about the subject. So hang up if that's not the case. All right, 148, come on in. You're on. Say hello. Everybody say hello just to know who it is. Go ahead. Okay, uh, caller, start talking or I'm going to hang this one up. Oh, sorry, sorry. My mic's mute. My name's Terry. Yes. I just like to say I'm a big fan of you. I'm a big fan. I, I love your, your, I agree with your views. I, I do agree with your views. Uh, you're a very smart man. What would you like to add, my friend? Thank you so kindly. Uh, I'd, I'd just like to ask, with, I, I heard you saying you should uh, shut down the stock market because there's pandemic. Yes. Uh, I've got a little counter argument. If, if we do shut down the stock market, how, how will we sell Bob's ebook? Thank you, Bob. You refund the ebook. <laughs> Every now and then you have this this happen. Let's try one one one. Come on in, uh, Skype caller number one. We have several Skype callers. Come on in, Skype caller number one. <laughs> Every now and then. Okay, let's start. Skype caller number two. You're on. Yes. Hello. Yes. Yes. Hello. I'm just. I myself, I have had Corona, and I, 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 I thought it was pleasant, man. I really liked it. Uh, I was. Uh, All right, caller from two hundred, come on in. Caller from two hundred, come on in. Hello. Yes. Hi, money. Okay, let's try one more. See if this is also a prank call. Caller from one uh, Skype call, come on in. Yeah. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. Awesome. Hello, sir. Uh, I actually agree with your opinion, but the way to bail off uh, companies and corporate bailouts, I suggest buying Bob's ebook. Maybe you can refund and make some money. Mother. Okay. Uh, I guess today was a day that we got taken over by a whole lot of people calling for some uh, ebook from somebody. I don't know who that is. But uh, look, if you have a good product, you don't have to do this. You could actually put the thing in the mail and say, hey, this guy has an ebook that is worth having. Now, by you doing that, I doubt how many people you're going to get to to really try to get your ebook. I, I doubt you'll get anybody to do the ebook. So I don't even think they're going to look. <laughs> Let me tell you, folks. Because of how this was done, just don't go to Bob Ebook. Anyhow, uh, let's, let's go ahead and continue the show. So uh, I said we need to go ahead and stop the stock. Uh, you know, we should freeze the stock market. We should stop the stock market altogether. Good. So where do we go from here? If every single American got a stipend while the coronavirus was still being mitigated, how do we move forward? What that means is Americans in a democratic manner will start to decide what they will buy, whom they will buy from, 
and that will democratize industry. And suddenly, the corporations, instead of dictating what's going to be out there, let's give a good example. Let's get a good example. Suppose we decided that we no longer wanted to have a dirty oil as it is right now because we're suddenly seeing. We can see in Paris. We can see in Bangladesh. We can see in India, in, in a... a well, I forgot the name, the capital of India. We can see in Kuala Lumpur. We can see in LA. We can see. We can finally breathe. We can finally breathe. Then, at that point in time, people would really start getting serious about what we have as a society. So, what is occurring now is the corporatocracy is getting fed by our government. And it's not just Republicans, folk. Because I, I, I hope you listen to what Minucci said when he was speaking to uh, Elizabeth Warren. He said, we agreed on this. Both Democrats and Republicans agreed on this. What that means, and you know, I understand that we have a Republican executive. I understand that we have a Republican Senate and just the Democratic House. But the fact of the matter is simple. You can actually hold out because these the, the corporatocracy needs money too. And if you decide to say, we are going to hold out as a society, the Congress, if the Democratic Congress says, absolutely not, we are not going to play ball eventually they will have to come and coalesce at some agreement. Not the absolutist agreement that says, we are not going to allow any of these issues. We are not going to allow corporations to have to dictate these items. So what I'm saying, folks, is simple. We have a lot of work to do, but we don't have a lot of time in which to do this work. We have a lot of work to do, we don't have a lot of time in which to do the work. What is the work that we have to do? First of all, and I want to ask you to please make sure to distribute our content. Why? Because our content is out there trying to empower people to take back this government as it should and as it can. Many people sit down and say, what, what's the point? The point is... We still in this country have one person, one vote. We still in this country has, have one person, one vote. And you know what? Coronavirus, coronavirus is not enough. It's not enough to mitigate all of that. So I ask you folks to please, if you're listening to Politics Done Right on YouTube or Facebook or Instagram, or Periscope, or Twitch, please remember, please remember to share, share, share. That is how we are going to make that difference. That is how we are going to get these things done. As you can see, for those of you who are listening on Facebook, evidently, we have a few people in here trying to push some something uh, <laughs> something about, uh, I guess, some book or something like that. I don't know if they understand the, the, our audience. We have a very, very enlightened audience, and I don't think these kind of uh, bombings work here, okay? Uh, so if you guys that decided to take over our, our, what is it, YouTube thread, trying to push that particular spam, it's not going to work with our audience. Our, we have a very powerful audience here, Pete, who understands how all of this stuff works. So trying to push this in our network, I don't think it's going to be quite effective. So you may, you may want to uh, go somewhere else. You may want to go somewhere else. You may want to go somewhere else. I'm just, I'm just warning you. But anyhow, folks, so moving on. How do we move from here? This is what we need to do. It would be great if uh, it would be great if we could actually go out there and simply 
protest on in the field, go to every single congressperson's office. That would be great. But we can't do that right now as this, uh, as this pandemic is going through. But what we can do is use our phones, use our letter writing, and use our fax machines. And this is what we have to be impassioned about. Whether you are a conservative listening to politics done right, whether you are a progressive listening to politics done right, irrespective of your ideology listening to politics done right, what I'd like to ask you to do is the following. Write a letter, write an email, write something to your congressperson and tell them you want to support Bernie Sanders' bill, Elizabeth Sanders, but you want to make sure that every single American gets a stipend until this coronavirus is mitigated. $2,000 a month until this stuff is taken over. People are going to say, is the money there? The answer to the question is, yes, the money is there because the money is created. And people say, is that going to create hyperinflation? No, it is not. Why isn't it going to create hyperinflation? What the politicians never tell you is you can only have inflation if they're not goods for the money that you're trying to give out. You can only have hyperinflation if there are no goods for the money you're trying to give out. That is the only way. Uh, let's see, Terry Jones, are you a, are you a, a Bob caller or are you a, uh, a caller that wants to add to the discussion? And what is your area code so I can pick out which number it is that you're calling from? What's your area code? Anyhow, and that, that is to uh, anybody who really wants to talk. I have a lot of calls. I'm not answering any of the calls except if I know it's not a call for vote for Bob or something like that. So you tell me what number you're from. I'll go ahead and pick the phone up and we'll take it there if, uh, if, if, if it's okay. Anyhow, see, we can take about 100 calls at a time, right? And right now we're full of calls. But I know that there is some sort of a spamming going on now on our account from somebody who decided to come on in, and I'm only going to answer a call that I think is actually a call from somebody real. So anyhow, 901, let's see if 901 is real. If 901 is real, it's fine. Otherwise, you'll be cut off right away. 901, you're hot. Hello. Am I, yeah, I'm the 901, correct? Yes, you are. So you were talking about inflation, right? Yes. And how you don't think it could be real. Do you think that'll affect the price of Bitcoin? Uh, the price of Bitcoin will not get affected by inflation. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Let's back up. There won't be inflation until we don't have the goods to service the, on to, on we, to service the money that's out there. Same applies to Bitcoin. Bitcoin is not uh, going to change. Uh, how, sh how should I put this? Based on how Bitcoin works, Bitcoin creates creates a scarcity for money if you understand how bitcoin works it creates a scarcity for money and since there is going to be no again there's no there's going to be no scarcity bitcoin will be pretty darn stable okay as it is right now as it should be right now forget about the machinations that occur but going back into the issue at hand when it comes to inflation we cannot have inflation unless Unless they're not goods. And you know what we have a lot of right now? We have a lot of goods. I mean, farmers want to get their product out. And in fact, we need to buy the farmer's product so that they'll continue producing. Otherwise, there will be. Let, let's give an example. Right now, they're throwing away a whole lot of milk. They're throwing a whole lot away a whole lot of different products, right? How do we stop that? We have to buy it. The government could stop all of that to keep these guys producing, right? You know, go ahead and buy the milk and get it distributed. The problem right now is the supply chain. There's a lot of this that we can actually do and actually do now. Anyhow, so that is how we're going to make the change, folks. You're going to need to go ahead and head out uh, to, to, your, to your telephone, to your fax machine, for those who still have those, as well as your as well as your emails. Now, emails don't get a lot of notice. Letters that you send, you spend some time to write to the Congress people, do. The other thing that you have to do 
is you have to use your Facebook pages. You have to use all of these things effectively. On your Facebook pages, point out, tell people, tell your audience, tell your sphere what you believe in. Stipend for all. Tell the people around what you want because that a lot of people want these same things, but they're scared to say it because of peer pressure. We have to get over that. And once we get over that, things are going to start changing. Once we get over that, things are going to start, uh, start changing. Now, um, there's another message uh, that I wanted to um, put out there with regards to COVID-19 real quickly. And that is, um, Trump is trying to get everybody back to work. Trump wants folks to get back to work at all costs. But if you take a look at what's occurring uh, with the military, and the military have a tendency to tell you quite a bit, right? And what the military is saying right now is, military is advising commanders that a COVID-19 resurgence could come in the months ahead. So what are they doing? They are preparing for it. While Donald Trump is insisting that a vaccine could be around in time for the kids to go back to school this fall, a leaked Defense Department memo contains much less sunny predictions. Like many health officials, the memo warns that the 92,000 Americans that have died so far in the coronavirus pandemic could be just the first wave with an even stronger wave coming in the fall. And when it comes to a vaccine, the memo warns that rather than looking for an answer this autumn, Americans might be waiting until the summer of 2021. And I, that is more realistic. That is also coming from, again, the military. And we know what the mil how the military operates. So here's what I got to tell you. Um, we, the, the bump that you're seeing in the stock market is not a real bump, but the stock market has very little to do with employment and all of that. It has to do with how all these guys leverage the capital that they have to increase its value. And... Right now, they're sucking on the tits of the government, and that's why the stock market is rising. The stock market will crash when reality comes out. The stock market will crash. Uh, the bounce that many are seeing is there to fool quite a few people. A lot of people are going to put their monies in there, and it's going to go south rather quickly. Uh, we only have about uh, four more minutes of, of talking here. So what I'd like, like you to do is, uh, again, take this advice. Let's go ahead, numero uno, and make those calls to your congresspersons and your senators. Tell them you want to support the Bernie Sanders bill, $2,000 stipend for every American citizen, whether they are working or whether they have been asked to stay home. For those who are working, consider that hazard pay and a great big thank you for putting yourself out there. For those who are just sitting at home, well, that will keep them you know, not starving. That will help them pay their rents. And for the small businesses, let's make sure and keep them inflated. That pizza shop, that sandwich shop, that little retail store, let's keep them at status quo right now. Let's keep things frozen until we can get this economy moving the way it should. Remember, econ an, econo an economy is human made. An economy is human made. Don't ever forget that. An economy is human made, nothing else. And therefore, we decide how it operates. We decide the laws of the economy, not the other way around. Folks, if you uh, like our shows, and we do quite a few of them, please be sure to support us. Please visit us at uh, store.politicsdoneright.com. Again, that is store, S-T-O-R-E, dot politics done right, dot com. Get one of our books. Hey, we have, as I see it, Class Warfare, the only resort to right-wing doom. If you really want to learn how the economy works in a very easy-to-understand manner, please go ahead and get that book at store.politicsdoneright.com. You can also get it at Amazon, but again, if you want to cut out the middleman and support uh, Politics Done Right fully, please get it there. You can also visit us at store, or rather, you can also support us by going to 
patreon.com slash politics done right. That is P A T R E O N dot com slash politics done right. P uh, again, and that is very, very, uh, by, by becoming a subscriber, by co- becoming a subscriber and showing that you support this show. What you do, my friends, is you show us that, not show us, you show America that we are moving forward. Again, that is patreon.com slash politics done right. I just added that to the field. P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash politics done right. For those of you that are listening on podcast, if you want to be, if you want to simply donate to the show, please go to paypal.me slash politics done right. That is paypal.me slash politics done right. But don't forget also, visit our store, store dot politicsdoneright.com. I want to thank you so kindly for being a part of the show today. I want to thank you for uh, above and beyond the spammers, above and beyond those the hijackers, above and beyond all of that. The most important things of those of us who are trying to do something positive in society, let's make sure to always support them. That is how we make a change in this country. That is how we make things happen. That is how we do it. And for those of you who want to uh, talk or chat or whatever, Terry Jones, I don't see uh, Mr. Jones, let me tell you, uh, I don't think you had a top chat in there. I'm looking through and I don't see a top chat from a Mr. Jones. Otherwise, I would have acknowledged you that you did uh, provide uh, us with a top chat. I don't see a top chat in there. Otherwise, sir, I would definitely have told our audience that you are one of the wonders supporting Politics Done Right on YouTube with a top chat. Look, folks, my name is Egberto Willies. This is Politics Done Right, and you know how I end this baby. I am what? Out! I'm Egberto Willis, host of Politics Done Right, an independent news program. I post several news videos of interest every day. I ask you so kindly to subscribe to my channel and please leave me some comments. Thank you very much.